Sometimes you need to know when to walk away and when you need to run. Imagine how boring video games would be if the player couldn't run. For that reason, I'm going to show you how to set up an easy sprint function using Bolt. Just a note before we get started, if you've been following along with this series, it would probably be a good idea to start getting our player controller cleaned up and a little bit more organization to our folders because things are only going to start getting messier when we start adding more player functions and components. If you're interested, after the sprint function in this video, I'll show you a good approach to cleaning things up using super units. For now, let's get moving. The first thing that we're going to need to do is set up a sprinting variable on our player. So click on the player prefab, scroll down to where it says variables, and add one called sprinting. Set it as a bool and leave it unchecked. Okay, after we apply that variable to our player prefab by going up to override and hitting apply all, we're going to need to um, set up a system that will determine whether or not we are sprinting and we'll use that information to set our speed. Okay, so um, let's right click off of that update function. If you have something similar where you're calculating movement, um, you know, that you're probably going to want to make sure that you're checking for sprint before you do that, which is why I'm doing it right here on the movement controller. So uh, breaking that update event, I'm going to bring this over to the left just a little bit, and I'm going to have to get input. I believe it is a input get button. Okay, and we're going to check for the button sprinting. Whether sprinting is being held down or not. So uh, we're actually gonna have to add that in our input manager. So going up to edit project settings, um, we're gonna have to add one to the bottom here. So hit 19, if you just add one number to whatever you have there. If it's 18, go 19, 19, go 20. And under this one right here, we're going to call this sprinting. And uh, we're gonna take this out and we're going to call left shift. And take joystick button one out. Go ahead and close that in the input manager. And um, off of this, uh, we're going to need to run our update into that. And from here, we're going to have to get a branch. And we're gonna run that into our branch. So if this is being pre pressed, if the sprint button, which is left shift, is what I had it set to, you can change to whatever you want in the input manager, um, going from branch. So when it is, uh, let's actually do this a different way. Uh, go over to our variable on our player controller here, or our player variables and grab the one that's called sprinting. Just hold Alt and pull it out onto your graph. If you pull it off the graph without holding Alt, it's get. If you hold Alt, it'll do set. So we're going to, when this is true, we are going to set our bool to true. So whenever Shift is bring, being pressed, we should have that set uh, to true. So we're going to actually copy this and we're going to paste it right below it. So, because we're gonna do the same thing if it's not true. So if left shift is not being pressed, then we're going to turn sprinting off. And with both of these, we're going to run into a branch. Okay, next thing we're gonna to need to do is we're gonna to need to check whether or not we're sprinting. So uh, not holding alt, just go and grab that sprinting and uh, bring it down here underneath the branch. And so we're gonna be checking if sprinting is true. If it is true, then what we're gonna do is we're going to um, go up to speed, grab speed by holding Alt. So we're going to set the speed. Let's actually grab that twice so we can actually copy or duplicate this one. And we'll put this one right down here. So we're gonna do the same thing for false. So if it's true, we need to set our speed. If it's false, we need to set our speed. And if it's true, let's set our speed. We'll just do a float here and we'll just set it to 10. If it's false, we'll set it back to five. So let's, uh, let's call this uh, sprint speed. And let's do the same thing, just holding, uh, come on, dude. All right, 
So let's try holding and letting go. Okay. And let's call this walk speed. All right. And both of these variables are going to need to go right here. Because that's already being accessed by this. And um, I went ahead and stretched out the, the walkway here. So uh, you can do that by just selecting the object and then setting the X to a larger number. For example, I think this one is set to, let's see. I got it set to six. So I just grabbed that little platform and set it to six to give myself some room to run. Okay, so um, looks like it's working. So whenever I'm holding shift, my sprinting bull should pop up. And whenever I let off, back to a regular run speed so fast slow fast slow good okay so that's pretty much your run function um, I'm gonna go ahead and clean things up a little bit so if you're interested in how I clean things up uh, first of all we need to set this and give it a name so that we know what that is that is set sprint and uh, this is come on man Okay, just put a little group on that one and we're gonna do uh, check sprint on that one. I'm gonna call this one yellow, color this one yellow. And this one is going to be green. I don't want it the same color as those variables. Uh, all right, cause I want those to kind of stand out a little bit. And I'm gonna move that up just a little, <laughs> a little bit. I don't wanna mess something up. Okay. All right, so um, basically what I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn these into super units. I'm gonna show you how I do uh, the first one. Uh, you know what, I'll do two. I'll do this big one first. Um, so let's uh, let's get this away from, because I don't need that next to my movement, because that's a, just a different function entirely. So let's just grab that and let's move that down. And uh, I'm gonna get all, oops, I don't want all of that. I want all of these. You know what? Let's go down. Let's move this off. Those player controllers or the movement controller there so I can get a little space to select that. And I'll show you exactly how I'll set that up to where it'll be a little bit more organized in this space. All right, so I'm actually gonna grab all of this because all of this is movement related. And I am going to uh, set up a new controller macro here. So let's go create a bolt flow macro and we'll call this movement. And going back to our player controller, again, I have to select all of these. And I'm going to right click and cut and put that in movement. Okay, so I've got the same thing in movement now. And I'm going to, right at the very beginning, I'm going to add an input. And all we need for this is a flow input. So input, try that again. Input nesting and do a control and let's just call it input and uh, that is pretty much it. So we'll hook that up. And on the outside of this, so going back to our player controller, where's our player at? Player. Okay, so we've got that big gap missing now, but that's okay. So we're gonna fix that. We're gonna put our... Okay, going back out to our player controller, I'm gonna go out to where it says update over here and I'm going to grab movement and I'm going to put it right here. And so that is movement. Okay, so basically what we're gonna do is just gonna be checking the input on each one of these things and then just putting it in its own super unit. So um, if you have one that does button input like this one, then the way you'll do that is you'll just break it. It's actually really super simple. Let's do, uh, okay, so we'll do another one called fire lightning. Create flow macro. Fire, lightning, light, yeah, lightning, okay. And going back to our player controller, just 
just going to select all of this and control X to cut it. And right here, I'm going to paste it. And I just needed one input. Okay, input. And then I'm gonna run that into here. And then fire lightning right there. And that one's good. Okay, by the time you get all that done, it should look something like this. Um, I have um, all of my player functions that move my player uh, in green. Um, so if it's checking and inquiring something, it's in yellow. Uh, if it has to do with enemies, it's red. If it's black, it's death. And that uh, singleton I didn't bother putting anywhere because it's only two things so it's kind of compact as it is a little uh, tip for you um, if you have something that has requires multiple updates which if you're doing physics bakes uh, supposedly you're supposed to do fixed update not just regular update but rather than running a fixed update to both of those um, and you know fixed update this guy and fixed update that guy just do a sequence and um, so if you add sequence right here and you can actually change the number of arrows coming out of this thing so if you got more than one that require a fixed update function um, you can just do it that way uh, also um, in my folders over here I just went ahead and uh, put all my macros in uh, folders so that they're easier to navigate player macros object macros enemy and function uh, so those are things that went in my function folder and the same thing for prefabs because as we start building more and more uh, levels and more and more functions and stuff th these are going to fill up quick so I'd really encourage you to do that um, so that you can stay organized. Okay you should not only be organized at this point your players should also be able to sprint. Hopefully this video was helpful for you however what if my player needs a good dash function? If only someone made a tutorial video on how to do that.